Hello friends, this video on adolescence part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Next is the pimples which make you feel bad and depressed. In fact, not only girls, even guys also get pimples and acne over their face. But girls, as always, they get more bothered with these kind of things. And in fact, girls get more pimples when compared to boys. Now, why do these pimples appear during your teenage? So what special happens inside your body that gives rise to these pimples? So pimples are also a sign of puberty. You will not see a lot of adults having pimples because these pimples arise due to over secretion of the glands. So we will talk about that in the next slide. So this cause happens. The reason behind pimples is something which is very specific to the adolescence period. So you do not see them uh, in when you are an adult. Now the question is why do they occur? So let us have a look. Now before we talk about the cause of pimples, you should be aware of what are glands. Because when I am going to talk about pimples, I am going to talk about some of the glands. So let us see. What do we mean by glands? So glands are organs that synthesize and secrete substances either into blood or epical surface. Now they are going to manufacture some substances, they, they are going to produce some substances, they will also secrete those substances. They can secrete those substances either into blood directly or on the surface, epical surface. What is an epical surface? It is the surface of the cell membrane that faces towards the lumen. That means our body is made up of cells, right? And every cell is surrounded by a cell membrane. So when we say that these glands will release their substances either directly into the blood and from blood then those substances will be carried to different parts of the body. That is one option. The other option is instead of directly releasing it into the blood, they will release it on the surface of the cell membrane so that from that cell membrane it will reach different cells of the body. So in that case it will specifically make the substance reach to each and every cell. So these are the two options by which glands secrete their substances. Now what kind of substances do glands release? Now glands release enzymes, they can also release hormones, they also release some metabolites. So there can be many chemical substances which can be released by glands. Now we will talk about them also a little later. So these glands consist of epithelial cells which specialize in secretion. So they are special type of cells which can secrete substances and that is why these glands are made up of those type of cells. Now some of the examples of glands are the sweat glands, oil glands, mammary glands. So you see all of these glands secrete some or the other thing. So if you talk about the sweat gland, have you seen that when you work really hard, maybe you do a lot of physical exercise or you are doing jogging or anything which involves a lot of hard work, you start sweating. What happens during sweating? You see water droplets coming out of your skin. So there are tiny pores on your skin through which water droplets are coming out. So from where is that water getting generated? So that water is nothing but that is called sweat. It, it, has, it is not plain water but it also has salt and other chemicals in it. So these sweat is actually secretion of glands called sweat glands. So these are specialized glands which secrete sweat on the surface of your body. So they are sweat glands. Similarly, you have oil glands. Now, you would have, many of you, those who have oily skin, would have observed that on your face, especially uh, on the T, T region, that is this region, this forehead and this nose part, especially this part, it remains oily most of the time if you have an oily skin. So from where are you getting that oil? So that oil is nothing but secretion of the oil glands which is present inside your, under your skin. Mammary glands, like a, a female who has, see, before we talk about mammary glands, here you can see uh, the example of a gland. So here you have the sebaceous glands, 
which are nothing but the oil glands. So you see the oil gland is located deep under the skin but these glands will release some substances which will come out on the skin surface so we can feel it. So we can feel the presence of oil on the surface but it is actually being secreted by this gland which is present deep inside and then the secretion comes to the surface. Next, the mammary glands, like the, when a new baby is born, during the lactation period, milk comes out of the breasts of the mother. That is because of the presence of the mammary glands. So the milk is nothing but secretion from these type of glands. So every gland specializes in secretion. So they secrete some substances. Now there are two types of glands, exocrine glands and endocrine glands. So let us see what are they. Exocrine glands, they secrete their products directly into the apical surface. Now exocrine glands are those glands which have ducts. That means they have tube-like structure and through the tube-like structure, they will directly release their product on the surface. So examples of exocrine gland would be sweat gland, oil gland, salivary gland, so let us look at the examples, how, how these are uh, exocrine glands. So let us talk about sweat glands. Just now I explained you, right, that the gland is located deep inside. So here you see the glands are located here. This is where the gland is located, which is deep under the skin. But the secretion is seen on the surface. That is because the gland is connected to the surface through tube-like structures, which are called ducts. So here you see ducts. So these tube-like structures are called ducts and therefore these are the glands which are with ducts. So they are also known as duct glands. So all these are examples of exocrine glands like sweat glands, oil glands, salivary glands. So you have the gland present deep under your skin but the secretion comes to the surface because there is a tube connecting the gland to the surface. So very, in a very similar way, the salivary gland, saliva which is present inside your mouth. Every time you try to feel inside your mouth, you see that there is some watery substance present inside your mouth. So from what is that watery substance? That substance is nothing but saliva. So saliva is nothing but the watery substance inside your mouth. So who is secreting this watery substance? Who is secreting saliva? There are salivary glands. So here you see these are the three salivary glands which are present in, which are part of your oral cavity basically. So these are the three glands. So these glands will secrete saliva. So here also the glands are located deep and under your, inside your skin, but they are connected to the surface and that is why the watery substance or the saliva is secreted on the surface of your mouth. I mean on the inner surface of your mouth and that is why you can feel the water. So the same concept applies for salivary gland also. So these type of glands are called duct glands or exocrine glands. This other type of glands are the endocrine glands. These are the glands without ducts. So they do not have any tube-like structure. So they directly pour their secretion into the blood. So they have nothing to do with surface. So you do not see their secretion on the surface. It, it goes into the blood and then blood carries this secretion to different parts of the body. So they are ductless glands because they do not have any tube-like structure because in this case they do not want to secrete their products on the surface. So they do not need a tube to connect them to the surface. So they will just secrete and it will put it into the bloodstream. So connection lost with the body surfaces, no ducts, they exist as isolated blocks of tissues because their structure will be very different from exocrine glands. No tube-like structure, they are just lump of tissues. So whatever they have to secrete, they will secrete directly into the blood. Now examples of such glands are thyroid gland, pituitary gland, hypothalamus, pineal. These are all examples of endocrine glands. In fact, there are many more endocrine glands and one of the primary function of endocrine gland is that they secrete hormones. And what are hormones? These are chemical substances which bring about a lot of changes in our body. In fact, the entire chemical coordination of our body is due to the presence of these hormones. 
So we will see what roles these hormones play, what are hormones, etc. So some of the examples of endocrine glands are like pituitary gland, pineal gland and hypothalamus. These are all endocrine glands which are present in the brain. So here you can see they are present in the brain. Thyroid is present just now I was talking about thyroid. It is present just below the larynx that is the voice box. Now each of these glands have a specific role to play. We will discuss that as we go ahead. So for now you just understand what are glands. You got a brief idea about that. So now let us see what causes acne and pimples during adolescence. Now as I said that there are now these acne and pimples, why do they happen? Due to the accumulation of a lot of oil. So this basically the gland which is responsible for causing acne and pimple is nothing but the oil glands. So increased activity of oil and sweat glands cause pimples and acne because a lot of oil comes on your skin, a lot of sweat comes on your skin and skin has tiny pores. So if you see there are tiny holes on our skin which connect to the oil glands. So as you see this tube like structure they connect to the skin surface. So on this surface here at each of these points you have tiny pores small pores so what happens is these glands whatever they secrete since their activity increases during adolescence so a lot of oil a lot of sweat gets secreted and since they are connected through the pores on the surface so they, they all come up on the surface now these secretion they carry dead skin follicles to the surface and accumulation of so much of oil causes pimples that is why when you go to a doctor saying that i have got this problem of uh, pimples then the doctor always says you that that means that your skin must be very oily because when there is too much of accumulation of oil that causes pimples so whatever medicine he prescribes you that is to control the secretion of the oil gland so that the amount of oil reduces so that your pimples or acne also gets cured now it is not only the physical appearance that changes during adolescence there is also a lot of change in the thought process in the mental ability of an individual there is a lot of intellectual development where the thinking ability increases, the person is able to distinguish between what is right and what is wrong, the person becomes more self-dependent than before. So he, he feels like more independent, he feels that he can take his own decisions. So and also during this period the learning capacity of an individual is also at its peak so you can learn a lot of new things you are a quick learner you can grasp new things very easily now before adolescence when you are a child that time you are more dependent on others like you are more dependent on your parents your teachers for doing things you cannot do things on your own because you cannot think a lot but the main thing that changes with adolescence is your thinking ability you are able to think more you are able to apply your brains and you can try to find out solutions to problems and that is how your mental and emotional maturity comes up with adolescence so adolescence is not only about having beards and mustaches it is also about becoming mature having a mature thinking Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.